Hello guys, welcome back to Envision Academy. Today's story is The Cruel Crane. Long ago, a wise spirit lived in a willow tree that stood by a certain lotus pond. It watched the creatures who lived in and around the pond and learned a lot about life. Now, at that time, the water in the pond used to run short at the dry season. Even though the pond was not over large, it contained a good many fish. A crane who was cruel and heartless visited one day. He was hungry. As he stood by the bank, he saw the fish and thought, I must outwit these fish somehow or other and make a prey of them. And he went and sat down at the edge of the water, thinking how he should do it. When the fish saw him, they hid under the lotus leaves and they asked him, What are you sitting there for? Lost in thought? I am sitting thinking about you, said he. Oh, sir, what are you thinking about us? They asked. Why? He replied, There is very little water in this pond and but little for you to eat and the heat is so great. So I was thinking, what in the world will these fish do now? Yes, indeed, sir. What are we to do? They cried. If you will only do as I ask you, I will take you in my beak to a fine large pond covered with all the kinds of lotuses and put you into it, answered the crane. That a crane should take thought for the fishes is a thing unheard of. Sir, since the world began uh, its eating us one after the other that you were aiming at, not so long as you trust me, I won't eat you. But if you don't believe me that there is such a pond, send down one of you with me to go and see it. Then they trusted him and handed over to him one of the number. A big fellow, blind of one eye, whom they thought sharp enough in any emergency, afloat or ashore. The crane took him and let him go in the pond. He showed the fish the whole of it, brought him back and let him go again, close to the other fish, and he told them all the glories of the pond. And when they heard that, what he said, they exclaimed, All right, sir, you may take us with you. Then the crane took the old half blind fish first to the blank of the other pond and alighted in a willow tree growing on the blank there. But he threw it into a fork of the tree, struck it with his beak and killed it, and then ate its flesh and threw its bone away at the foot of the tree. Then he went back and called out, I have thrown that fish in, let another one come. And in that manner, he took all the fish one by one and ate them, till he came back and found no more. But there was still a crab left behind there, and the crane thought he would eat him too, and called out, I say, good crab, I have taken all the fish away and put them into a fine large pond. Come along, I will take you too. But how will you take hold of me to carry me along? I will bite hold of you with my beak. You will let me fall if you carry me like that. I won't go with you. Don't be afraid. I will hold you quite tight all the way. Then said the crab to himself, If this fellow once got hold of fish, he would never let them go in a pond. Now, if he should really put me into the pond, it would be capital. But if he doesn't, then I will cut his throat and kill him. So he said to him, Look here, friend, you won't be able to hold me tight enough, but we crabs have a famous grip. We, if you let me catch hold of you round the neck with my claws, I shall be glad to go with you. 
and the other did not see that he was trying to outwit him and agreed so the crab got hold of his leg with his claws as securely as with a pair of blacksmith's pincers and called out off with you now and the crane took him and showed him the pond and then turned off towards the willow tree uncle cried the crab the pond lies that way but you were taking me this way oh that that's it is it answered the crane you dear little uncle you very sweet nephew you call me you mean mean me to understand i suppose that i am your slave so who has to lift you up and carry you about with him now look at the heap of fish bones lying at the root of that willow tree just as i have eaten those fish every one of them just so i will devour you as well ah those fishes got eaten through their own stupidity answered the crab but i am not going to let you eat me on the contrary it is you that i am going to destroy for you in your folly have not seen that what i was outwitting you if we die we die both together for i will cut off this head of yours and cash cast it to the ground and so saying he gave the crane snake a grip with his claws as with a vice then gasping and with tears trickling from his eyes and trembling with the fear of death the crane begged him saying oh my lord indeed i did not intend to eat you grant me my life well well step down into the pond and put me in there and he turned round and stepped down into the pond and placed the crab on the mud at its edge but the crab cut through its neck as clean as one would cut a lotus stalk with a hunting knife and only then entered the water when the spirit who lived in the willow tree saw this strange affair he made the wood resound with his plaudits uttering in a pleasant voice the verse the villain though exceeding clever shall prosper not by this villainy he may win indeed sharp-witted in deceit but only as the crane here from the crab